<laughs> now, I mentioned uh, that we're going to be uh, a million and a half kilometers away. Anytime you have two bodies that orbit one another, this, a two-body system will have five places that are stable or semi-stable in the gravity field of this rotating system. This was discovered by a French mathematician in the 19th century, uh, Lagrange, and where we are going is that L2 point. And so it sits uh, outside the Earth and the Sun, and if we run this little animation, what we actually do, you see the moon whipping around the Earth there, and you'll see Webb come in, and we actually orbit about that second Lagrange point. Uh, so we keep the sun shield, keeps the sun, the earth, and the moon on one side of us. We're not in the shadow of the moon because we've got to be able to communicate back to the earth. Uh, but the size of the sun shield means that uh, we can keep those things uh, on the hot side and keep the cold side on the cold side. So now, now the part that gives everyone uh, uh, gives, causes their heart to skip a beat. <laughs> this is how we get out there. So this is an animation that uh, folks at Northrop Grumman put together showing the sequence of events. Once we get uh, released by the upper stage from the Ariane, we go through a series of maneuvers and deployments. You can see on the top the time after launch, uh, the distance will come up with the activity, and you can see a little graph showing where we are in our journey. See, the solar array comes out very quickly, so we have power. We start to do any course corrections we need to to make sure we're going to the right uh, orbit out there at L2. The smaller the correction we have to make, the longer our life is because it saves fuel. Right about the time we get close to the moon, our high gain antenna comes out so we can communicate at a high data rate. You can see about two days we're past the moon. Now we begin the major deployments where what's called a pallet that holds the sun shield, the forward part uh, folds down. We'll follow that by folding the back part down. I got to watch them test this at Northrop Grumman. They do a gravity offload to test the system. Now once those are down, we want to move the telescope away from the spacecraft because it is a little warm itself. So we telescope up on a tower about five feet. Now the covers that protected the sun shield during launch are released and they roll back. Some covers in near the spacecraft uh, core do the same thing. And once those are released, we can actually begin to push out concentric tube telescope booms to extend the sun shield. There are five layers to this sun shield, and it's critical that there be separation in these layers so that heat from one layer can escape out before it hits the next. So they'll tension up the system, which is just a pulley system that brings, raises the layers apart and provides tension to them. The next deployment is, is a flap in the back that you can think of as a, a sail because it's there to balance the solar photon pressure that would tip the telescope over if that were not there to balance. The center of pressure and the center of mass aren't exactly the same. That's ridiculously cool. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> That's the cryo cooler starting for that mid infrared instrument, a little refrigerator to keep it super cold. <laughs> and here, after you know about 10 days or so, the secondary mirror comes out, and it's at this point when light can actually, focused light can get into the science instruments. Another radi there are a lot of radiators that get deployed during this sequence. And then we bring drop leaf table st style, the two wings uh, come out. It, so after about two weeks, the major, uh, I call them visible deployments are done, but then the mirrors themselves are held down to that backplane structure for launch. They get released and we begin to start moving those as they're cooling down and begin to bring them into shape. It takes about a month for us to get out to L2. Uh, we're cooling down this whole time, starting to commission the instruments. Uh, we're a little bit like a planetary mission in that we'll launch fire and smoke, a lot of activity. The first data don't come out until six months after that. So we, when, after the launch, if you don't hear anything for six months, it's okay. <laughs> well, well, we actually, that's a big activity we have now is how do we bring along, you know, the public, the taxpayer with all the activities that are going on, even though we're not seeing data yet. Well, those first two weeks, will we be able to follow along live with each and every deployment? Yes, that's going to be a big part of... Uh, Again, bringing people along for yeah. the ride is uh, we have social media accounts describing, you know, this is what's going to happen today and, you know, here's how we know that that happens. We don't have any pictures and there's nothing that will be taking a picture of us while we're out there, but uh, we'll have, you know, great computer simulations showing the state of the spacecraft. <laughs>